Step 2. The experiment. In this step, we will describe the basic observations from the photoelectric effect experiment. So the basic observation is that if we have a sheet of metal and we shine a light of a certain frequency, we will observe that photoelectrons are ejected from this metal. The, uh, the energy of the photoelectrons is dependent on the light and we will explore this uh, relationship. So, what does uh, uh, classical electromagnetic theory tell us? It tells us that in order for the electrons to be ejected from the metal, they must receive some energy. And this energy is provided by the electromagnetic radiation in the form of light that we shine on the metal. So, so far so good. There is nothing surprising. But the devil is in the details. In particular, we will explore the relationships between energy of the ejected electrons, the frequency of the light, the uh, intensity of the light, and also the time it takes to emit the photoelectrons after we start shining the light on the metal. So the basic experiment was performed by Hertz in 1887, and the setup is given here. He took a vacuum tube where he placed two charged capacitor plates connected to uh, this very basic circuit. Well, this emitter plate E was negatively charged, and this uh, positively charged collector plate C was designed in such a way that the ejected electrons, the photoelectrons uh, traveling from E would be accelerated towards the collector plate C, producing current which was then measured by the ammeter A over here. But uh, Hertz uh, designed the experiment in such a way that he could change the polarity of the uh, 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 voltage. In other words, he could make the collector plate negatively charged and the emitter plate E positively charged, meaning that the electrons, which were still being ejected from the um, emitter plate, they would start traveling towards E, but due to the negative charge on the collector plate, they would be, uh, um, they would be stopped. This had the effect of decreasing the current measured by A. Also, he noted that the current generated was proportional to the applied voltage in the, following, in the following way. So here we are plotting voltage on the horizontal axis and the measured current on the vertical axis. And Hertz noted that for large voltage, the current saturated. This makes sense. Uh, if we shine light on the metal plate, electrons are ejected uh, in certain numbers and with certain kinetic energies. If we apply a certain voltage, some of these electrons will have enough energy to reach the collector plate and produce electric current. Increasing this voltage will make more of these electrons accelerate towards the uh, collector plate. But after some, uh, um, some magnitude of the voltage, it will not make a difference whether you increase it further or not, because we will be collecting all of the produced photoelectrons, meaning the current will saturate. Also, the current is proportional to the intensity of the light. More intense uh, radiation produces more uh, photoelectrons, meaning more of them will be collected by the electric plate, resulting in a higher current. Now let's go in the opposite direction and start decreasing the voltage. Negative voltage, as we said, would, was stopping the electrons from reaching the collector plate E, decreasing the current. And that's exactly what we see here by these curves. And in fact, if we increase the voltage too much into the negative region, we would reach what's known as the stopping voltage, meaning all of the, uh, all of the photoelectrons were being stopped before reaching the collector plate C, resulting in no current measured by the ammeter. Also, Hertz noted that the photoelectrons have a distribution of kinetic energies. And this is also expected, because sometimes the electrons are ejected from the surface, sometimes uh, they are ejected from inside the surface, so, so they need to travel a little bit more. And he found a way of how to measure uh, the maximum kinetic energy of these electrons. He was adjusting the, uh, the potential difference on the collector plates, such that the electron with the highest uh, maximum kinetic energy was just about to be stopped by the negative plate. 
In other words, when his, when his current measurements reach zero, he knew that's when all the electrons were being stopped and the potential difference at that plate gave him a good estimate of the maximum kinetic energy of this distribution. By applying conservation of energy, that the change in kinetic energy uh, must be equal and opposite to the change in the potential energy, he was able to deduce that the maximum kinetic energy is given by the following expression, where the Kmax, the maximum kinetic energy, is equal to E times delta Vs, the electric potential energy. Now, these were the basic observations of Hertz's experiment. In the next step, we will consider what our understanding of classical electromagnetism tells us about these observations. See you there.